Hey everyone, I finally gotten up to one of my favorite episodes, Wild Force Team Carnival. I don't know why I like this one, I've just always liked it. Ever since I was a little kid, I saw this one, and it really made me to like, it made me want to like, stick around and watch more Wild Force. Because when I was a little kid, for some reason, right around this time, at this part of the show, I was kind of dropping out of it, and I wasn't like, tuning in for every episode. Like, I must have seen them in reruns or something, because I remember, like, seeing them as a kid. But yeah, th there's a lot of episodes around this time I skipped, so I didn't see them initially as they were coming out. So anyway, moving on to the summary, Max is, uh... Let's see, he pumps into Kite, and he takes him up to the Animarium. And then, meanwhile, we see what the orgs are up to. Uh, Jindrax feels unimportant, and, uh... Wants to prove himself to Mandalok, so he goes to find his brother. So Jindrax goes to see his brother, Juggalo. Yeah, his name's Juggalo. And uh, Juggalo is in the process of juggling a bunch of people. Just cuz, I guess. <laughs> and so anyway, uh, Jindrax says, hey, you want to help me take out the rangers? And Juggalo's like, yeah, we can be Team Carnival. And I love that name. It's such a cute name. And it makes me think of the ending to Cure Uger. So then, uh, up on the Animarium, the Rangers are going to go take Kite to see if they can find something to trigger his memory to see if he can remember who his parents are. Okay. He can't just be a homeless kid? Or, like, an orphan who's homeless? I don't know. Like, when Cole talked to him before, when he bumped into him, he was, like, or, yeah, Kite was stealing donuts or whatever from the construction workers, and I can't remember now, did Kite say something like he'd been doing that for a while? I don't remember now. Anyway, it, I don't know, it's just a weird thing to me, it doesn't quite, it feels like just a forced plot reason to get them to where they want them for the Sentai footage to fit in. Or whatever. Anyway, moving on. Um, Max and Kite and Taylor, they see a fair, and Kite's like, Hey, I want to go to the fair. Maybe that'll make me remember. So Max and Kite are all excited. Taylor's like, oh, all right, watch over the kids. And then uh, Jindrax sees them go in the fair, so him and his brother Juggalo disguise themselves as mascots, I guess, that work at the fair. Yeah, they just beat them up and steal their outfits. So then, um, yeah, they sneak after them, and then we get a little montage of Max, Kite, Taylor doing stuff at the fair. Max and Kite are having a good time. Taylor's not really having a good time until she gets to the little whack -a alligator game or whatever that was. I don't remember. There's these little things that pop out, and you hit them like whack-a-mole, except instead of popping up holes, they come out like... Alright, whatever. Uh, so, then the bad guys, they trap Kite on this roller coaster. Max and Taylor morph, and they almost win, but then, like, the orgs threaten to hurt Kite. But then the other rangers join in, they rescue Kite, and then uh, the rangers give Max and Taylor new weapons. We have new weapons, here you go! Alright! <laughs> and there's this one funny scene that kind of became a meme I saw somewhere, where... Danny hands Taylor her new weapon, and she looks at it, and just kind of looks confused at it, which makes sense. Uh, I'll talk about my thoughts on this whole thing at the end. So they combine the new weapons into a new blaster, and it destroys Juggalo, and then, let's see, da, 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 oh yeah, Jindrax uses Toxka's staff, and the incantation, Ancient Spirits of Toil and Strife, blah blah blah. That's pretty cool to see, somebody else uh, using that staff. Also, apparently it's not, like, something that's locked into Toxica. Anybody can do it, it's just that, I don't know, it's her job? Or something? <laughs> Whatever. Juggalo grows giant, the rangers call the zords, and then down on the ground, Toxica comes over to get her staff back from Jindrax, and Jindrax like, is like, fine, I've got what I need, and he reveals to her that he has the seeds that the thing shoots out, and he wants, he plans on eating them, growing, and helping his brother defeat the rangers, and, uh, Toxico's like, no, you can't do that, because you'll die after, or something, 
And Jinder is like, I don't care. And so then he eats the seeds and then grows and... Let's see. Dur, 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 dur. Let's see. Him and uh, Juggalo, they manage to overpower the Megazord. The Rangers are in trouble. And then Merrick shows up with his Zord. And then uh, they defeat Juggalo. And then Jinder X is like, I'll get my revenge. And then he burps and that negates the any powers the seeds had and he shrinks back to normal down on the ground toxica goes to jindrax and jindrax is all bummed that he lost his brother and also he can't defeat the rangers but then he's like it's all right because you and me toxica we're a team that's the way my brother would have wanted it we're a team carnival or whatever and so then he's kind of cheered up and then the Rangers are goofing around with Kite, and Kite sees Merrick, and he's like, I recognize you, but I don't know from where. And there's the end, and it's a decent episode. I still really like it. I don't like it as much as I did as I was when I was like a really little kid, but it's a good it's a good episode. So I really like that Jindrax gets a lot of focus, because he's definitely an interesting villain that up till this point he Displays a lot of personality, but we don't really get to delve too deep into him as a character. Except for here, we get to see he has a brother that he's really friendly with. And he actually cares for, which is unique for Power Ranger monsters. He has a bond with Toxica, and Toxica has a bond with him. As shown by when he says he's going to eat the seeds, she's like, no, you can't do that. And, let's see. Let's see, we learn from this that Gender X... Uh, has some insecurities, he wants acceptance, and also he wants self-assurance. And, oh, one of the other nice things is he has a brother, and that's just a really unique thing for Wild Force orgs, because I'm trying to think, do orgs have family members often? I can't think off the top of my head any org who had a relative. So then, let's see, duh, duh, duh. oh yeah, the thing weird with his brother Juggalo, his name is the name that Insane Clown Posse fans use for themselves. Oh, I actually have an Insane Clown Posse CD somewhere here. Hmm. Oh, well, it's somewhere on there. I'm sure I have a CD called Gathering of the Juggalos or something that's taken from, like, a big, like, fan concert that Insane Clown Posse did. Anyway, it's cool. I wonder if they're aware of this character that's supposedly, or possibly named after them. I read on Ranger Wiki, Juggalo's name isn't spelled exactly the same. There's an E, where in the fan name, it's uh, an A. So, uh, I don't know. Oh, when you see things with Juggalo, he doesn't have a whole lot of personality to him, more than many other monsters. He's a goofy monster. He's friendly with Jindrax. He's kind of clownish. But the weird thing with him is he doesn't seem inherently evil. And that kind of stands out to me because, like, most of the bad guys, they just want to go out and destroy stuff. With Juggalo, he doesn't really seem, like, intent on destroying anything or ruining anyone's lives. Like, we see him juggling people, but that seems to be more like just he's doing it because he doesn't know any better. Like, no one ever took him aside and said, hey, that's wrong, they don't like that. It seems like if... He's one of those monsters that it seems like if you were to just talk to them, they might be rational enough to be like, oh, what I've been doing is wrong. Well, I'll stop doing that. I'll do something good. It's an interesting thing. I like monsters like that. I wish it could have been... Ex I wish that's a thing that they could explore more in Power Rangers, because a lot of times they really don't explore the monsters too deeply. I don't know if they think that even doing it occasionally would make it disturbing when they just, like, outright destroy a monster... <laughs> Like, I don't know, it's Power Rangers, so... Like, I'm not... I don't really have a problem with them destroying the monsters out of nowhere like that. I'm, I don't know, maybe I'm just used to it, whatever. Um, oh yeah, the new weapons are introduced so abruptly. That's a weird thing. And it's even weirder because there's all that s footage of uh, Kite and Taylor and Max at the fair. And I feel like they could have cut some of that. And maybe shown the rangers doing something to get these weapons. Like, it would have been really easy to do. Like, maybe this could have been something set up in a previous episode where, like, Shayla is talking about, oh, hey, we found this thing on the Animarium. It might have new weapons in it. And the other rangers are like, oh, cool, so how do we open it? And she's like, I don't know. And then, like, that comes back a few times. And then here, 
there's a scene or something where they find something that unlocks it, or maybe Kite is the key to unlocking it. Because that would make sense, because aren't the 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 weapons also what make up uh, Animus? Or is it the Isis Megas? I don't remember. One of them... I don't know. There could have very easily been a better way to introduce these new weapons than just, hey, we have new weapons. And uh, as far as I know, these don't show up again, I don't think. I looked up on Ranger Wiki and it said that uh, the weapons combining was only in the American footage. That wasn't something from Sentai. That's pretty unusual that they would go to the extra trouble for something like that. So then, uh, let's see, uh, da, 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 looking through my notes here, they jumped around here. Oh yeah, uh, one of the things that's really neat was seeing all the stuff Jindrax did in this episode. He got to use Toxica's staff, he got to grow, that's really cool. It reminds me of back in Mighty Morphin when Rito took over for Rita and Zed once, and he uses their staffs to make a monster grow. And, oh yeah, there was a time when I think Zed used Rita's staff to make a monster grow. It's always cool when, like, whatever the, uh, the mode of making the monsters grow is used by somebody who's not the typical, like, monster grower person. I'm trying to remember in Lightspeed if... Wasn't there an episode where somebody, aside from Jinxer, made the monster grow? I can't remember now. Anyway... Uh, oh, and then the, uh, Jindrax growing giant is cool, because, uh, that's not something we usually see from, like, the main villain generals. Let's see, back in Mighty Morphin, Goldar routinely grew, and, uh, oh, my notes got a word wrong here. Okay, there we go. So, anyway, Goldar grew a lot, uh, let's see, Rito grew a few times, I'm trying to remember, and Zeo, Zeo didn't really have, like, generals who fought. There was a Clank, uh, Prince Sprocket. They didn't really take on the Rangers. They never grew giant. Porto grew giant once in Turbo. Um, so anyway, moving on. Uh, one of the really weird things in here, when Jindrax shoots Toxica's, uh, staff, and then she comes to get it back, he says, I've got what I need, and... He shows her he's holding the seeds, but the weird thing is, they don't call them seeds in this episode. This is the one episode, I think, where they don't call them seeds, they call them beans. Why are they beans and not seeds now? All I could guess was maybe they th thought that people would remember the episode about Master Org's backstory, and that that would be fresh in people's minds, and they didn't want to imply the, uh... These seeds are the same as the seeds that Victor Adler ate and turned him into Master Org? I don't know, that's a really roundabout, strange thing, if that is. But it's the only thing I can think of for why they would change the seeds to beans. Whatever. I don't know. <laughs> um. Da -da -da. Right, one of the things that's cool is when Jindrax is genuinely distressed at the loss of his brother... That's something we also don't see much, is, like, the monsters mourning each other. Which I understand why. It's Power Rangers, it's lighthearted, it's not meant to be, like, set in reality. Like, a monster dies, it's not really dying. It's just, it's part of the story, and he blows up. It's not meant to convey a lot of, like, any weight. But once in a while, it is nice to have that if it's, like, the main character. And the thing with Jindrax mourning his brother kind of reminds me of Zeltrax and Dino Thunder. There was an episode where he had a clone that he thought of as his son, and then the Rangers blow it up, and at the end he's like, Rangers, you took away the only family I ever know. I'll get my revenge. And then he never mentions that again and never really behaves any differently. I don't know if Jindrax ever mentions Juggalo again, but there is like a distinct shift in his... Uh, the way he acts and his personality from here on out. Throughout the season, he's been slowly, gradually changing. Like, at the beginning, he's pretty much just a generic, uh, evil general guy. Toxica's, you know, the other evil general. And also, Jindrax is kind of implied to be the dumb one, because Toxica can see through Master Org's disguise and sense that there's something wrong. And he's, he's just willing to go along with it, because he probably doesn't care. 
But then as the season has gone on, he's developed more of a personality, and we start to see a little bit more into him here, where we're seeing, like, he has insecurities, and he wants acceptance and self-assurance, and, uh, yeah. Oh, and then... There's another little clue at the end to Kite's true identity, and I know what the true identity is. I've seen all these before a bunch of times. That's why this is a rewatch and not for the first time watching. But uh, anyway, there's a little clue to who he is. Kite sees Merrick and he recognizes him, but he doesn't know from where. And uh, I was thinking, and this is the first time I've ever thought this, what if they had put like red herrings in for Kite? Like, what if there were other, like, possible, uh, like, true identities he could have had? And I was thinking, what if one of the things they had set up was that Kite is kind of a uh, reincarnation or reformed version of Zanaku? I thought that would be a really cool idea. It's something that I don't think Power Rangers has done in any season where a monster is reborn as, uh, as a person. Or have they? I don't know, I'm, I'm trying to remember, and I, I don't remember off the top of my head if that ever happened. But I thought that would be a kind of a cool thing. Uh, it probably wouldn't be very convincing to everybody. It's pretty clear what Kite's connection to Animus is, and uh, also Kite is the same kid from that one episode where they were in the other dimension or whatever. So it's pretty clear like where they're going with Kite's story, but I think they probably could have had it be a little bit more ambiguous to who he really was. So anyway, that's it for this one. Hope you enjoyed it. See ya.